I think we can start pretty much any time, right? Oh, Elsie's here. Yeah, you're going to have to keep an eye on the, uh... oh, hello. Can you hear anyone or see anyone? Um, everyone has their camera off. It looks like Aki has turned okay. off her mic, so yeah. Elsie? Hi, Elsie. Hi. Oh, there we are. So do you want to get started? Yeah, let's get started. You can bring up the slides then, eh? Yeah, I'm going to share right now. Awesome. And, oh, I'm probably going to need my comments too. Here, we're going to open up a chat window too. So if anybody has questions, feel free to just drop them in the chat or you can even chime in. It's totally fine. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm so glad you came. I'm so excited for this, you guys. <laughs> How's your day going? Good. Yes. You were a little nervous, at least I was. I won't speak oh. for Jenny, but. Yes, we, we <laughs> all know. Elkie would attest to that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is very fair. I'm super excited. Like, I'm so too. Perfect. We've got some fun stuff to share, so that'll take the nerves away when we start chatting about what we're excited about. <laughs> so I was just saying that if you have questions or anything, feel free to interrupt us. Pop a comment in the chat, even if you don't feel comfortable shouting out, that's okay. But we're not like but super- Shout out as well. It's okay. Yeah. Interrupt. It's great. It just kind of, like, we're not that formal, so. <laughs> you don't we're need pretty to laid back. It. Yeah, super laid back. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is Jenny. That's it. I think yep, everyone. Hey, I'm Rachel. Um, but yeah, I thought what we could start with is kind of like if you want to pop in the chat, kind of your comfort level with branding. Like, let us know. Like, um, you can put like a thumbs up if you're feeling really good about it. Thumbs down if you like don't know anything about it and it's confusing to you or you don't even know what it means. Or if you're kind of like maintaining and doing okay, let us know about that as well. And um, yeah, we're gonna get started. Um, and again, if you have questions, feel free to fire away. But Jenny, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yes, okay. So I'm Jenny, I'm the owner of Social Stationery. And just so you guys know, before we get started, I'm just gonna let you know my past in my workplace has always been behind the laptop that's where I like to be. So this is completely out of my comfort zone and my first webinar, so just bear with me. Um, so you can see that I go by a whole bunch of different names. Um, I think the main one there would be Chaos Coordinator because um, on top of my small business, we're also a blended family of six kids. So that keeps me busy handling everything. Um, on the work side, I started in IT and website design in 2005 for a couple companies in Kitchener area. And then in 2016, I stepped out into branding and logo designs as well as social media. That was mainly just contract with the Oxford County Public Health and a couple real estate agents in the area. And then in 2020, I took the leap and went on my own completely. Um, and it was actually a year ago in January and Rachel helped me with my headshot um, and that rebranded everything and I came out as social stationery um, where I specialize in social media, um, logos, branding, as well as website and graphic design. Um, as well on a personal side I like reading, hiking, and cooking and baking with all the kids which doesn't usually go well with all of them but still interesting. <laughs> Um, a few people as, that well, <laughs> as well, I have a few obsessive things. I love pineapples, um, and I'm going to put it out there, the Royals, which is mainly Prince Harry, and uh, the wonderful Matthew McConaughey. So that's a little bit about, little bit about me. Yay. Yeah. I love that you love pineapples and like how pineapples follow you everywhere. <laughs> and I, and I, I can't tell anyone how it starts, but this also has to do with the brand. This is something... Yes. that was attached to me and it's continued. And so we'll get into that yeah. later too. Absolutely. Um, I have a background in film and television. So I went to school for that. I worked for a little while in the industry for like a commercial production company in Toronto. 
which was fun. We did like commercials for the Bay and Canadian Tire, like all the Canadian brands. And uh, when I moved back to Woodstock, um, I worked in HR for a little while, but then I opened my photography studio in 2013. And uh, what kind of got me into branding and headshots was I started doing work with uh, real estate magazines. So they'd send me out to all these different real estate companies and I do pictures of um, different agents for the cover of their magazine. And uh, it was really fun. I got to meet all these businesses. I would share tips and stuff that I knew and we would kind of trade notes. And that's kind of what got me into it. And um, I met up with a dance studio, uh, Miss Laney from uh, Footprints Dance. And that kind of really got me interested in branding and brand photography in particular. So, um, and you might've seen my work on billboards and stuff like that around town for agents and for footprints. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that along with my family business uh, for the past handful of years. And uh, in the summers and spare time, I, I'm, I'm, I like to go to the cottage and just do outdoorsy stuff. Nothing too exciting. Playing guitar really bad with my kids. Just making lots of noise. <laughs> yeah, so Danny, you were going to kind of, well, actually, what I wanted to talk about first was kind of the, some of the things that I hear from uh, the clients that I have come in for headshots. Um, and it's, it's a common theme. And this is kind of how we started working together is Jenny would notice that her clients might not have the photography they need to work with their brand. And I would find I do the photography, but that's only one piece of the puzzle for your branding. And, um, I would be like, Oh, if, if only we could do these other things to kind of solidify your brand a little bit. But the main thing is people aren't getting followers and likes and, um, they're not feeling like they're being taken seriously as a business owner, um, which I understand, especially for a lot of home-based businesses, um, which I work with a lot. Um, there's just sometimes a feeling, and I've had this feeling myself, where you want that bit of legitimacy. And uh, that's something that we can help with. Um, and engagement as well. Just not getting, you'll have this great idea for a post, you'll put it out there, and then you're just not getting any traction with it. And uh, Jenny and I feel that having a solid brand and having something cohesive can really help to make those things happen for you. And a lot of people don't um, put like photos, headshots, and branding together. They kind of keep them separate, but like we're going to get into, you kind of need both of them to make that strong presence. Mm -hmm. um, so just simply the mark, um, branding is just the, I'm just going to move this a little, sorry. There we go. Um, the marketing practice of creating a name, symbol, or design that identifies and differentiates a product from other product. So there's many aspects that go into this to create your brand, and we're going to go into those in a little bit. Um, but simply put, your brand is your promise to your customer. It tells them what they can expect from your products and your services, and it differenti differentiates your offering from that of your competitors. Your brand is derived from who you are, who you wanna be, and who people perceive you to be. So it's just, I know, Rachel, we talked yesterday um, how you were saying about ask, getting the advice from someone else on how they see your business. Yes, um, that's one of the best ways to start to kind of form and understand your brand is looking at your testimonials. Um, if you have a peek at kind of what people are saying about you already, it's kind of a natural way for you to start to figure out what direction you want to take your brand. Um, to that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like a little roadmap for you almost. Yeah. And storytelling is one of the best ways. I'm sure maybe every, has anyone heard like this trend, like storytelling for branding is the most important thing. It seems to be everywhere right now but it's really tricky to get into a place of storytelling unless you have a solid brand vision first, because you kind of have to know what sorts of stories you want to tell and the sort of needs that your customers have that you're going to come in and meet. So without having that established, um, it's hard to get to that next stage where you can start to kind of uh, write your story and, and almost write a story for your customers too, because they're going to kind of see themselves in the stories that you've told if you're, if you're doing it correctly. And this, uh, Terry O'Reilly, like I love this quote. Um, 
storytelling is powerful marketing. Every company has a story to tell. We are hardwired to love good stories. That's absolutely true. I mean, that's kind of how um, we all have like family stories, things that uh, you just can't get out of your head. Um, but as marketers, we have to be able to um, kind of look at what we're doing through the lens of storytelling. And there's a few ducks that you have to get into a row in order to move ahead and, and start to establish that. So, um, and yes, um, it's not what you think you are, it's how you are perceived. So that's a, a fabulous quote, Brand. It's not what you say it is, it's what they say it is. So um, that's why those testimonials are a perfect place to start. So that's one of the first exercises you can do when you're starting to figure that out is even if it's not a formal testimonial, like on your Google page or something, if you're just beginning in your business, you can even just kind of look about what your friends say about you um, anyone who's had an experience with you that's maybe sent you a positive text about what you've done, um, like Val, like definitely I can think of a million and one things I'd say about you, <laughs> awesome things. And you can start to use that to form how um, your brand takes its shape. So, yeah. Um, so like we were saying before, it's all about your story, telling your story, every part, every chapter, every character, every subtitle. Um, getting personal with your clients that will engage you um it will also gain trust for them as well it's all about telling your story through your business and there's a ratio out there that's 80 20 80 being the biz, uh the personal side the story side 20 being your business side so you want to use that ratio and in, in your social media posts in your websites where you want to tell that story but relate it back to your service or your product um, marketing is no longer really about the stuff you make or you sell, but it's about those stories you tell. And in general, the story is your brand. Mm -hmm. So I guess the next step is going on to what the, how to create this. Yeah. So, um, there's a few simple places to get started and these are all about how we create your roadmap. Colors are a wonderful way to set the tone and the mood. And um, we, sh we will have some helpful information about that in a little bit. Um, but colors are a great starting point because that's something you can use in your visual branding, but it also um, kind of inspires us to um, provide a certain message. Like you can think about um, more moody tones that has a more serious um, uh, feel, um, more optimistic colors might be lighter, brighter colors. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can make it work, but those are all things you need to take into account when you're creating your your brand, um, your brand mood as well. And that comes down to like the sort of captions you write, the sort of copy that you write. Um, are you um, kind of have to make some choices about the voice that you're using when you're presenting the information um, and your niche as well. Are you going to serve a broad audience or are you going to kind of narrow in on a particular type of client? So the first thing we're going to look at is your brand color. Um, I'm going to just get rid of that. So you can tell your company's entire life story in a logo or a storefront, but your branding colors can provide that shortcut. It makes you memorable. It makes you stand out. Um, we've all heard and we all know that certain colors evoke certain emotions. Therefore, your brand colors actually can have the ability to impact your sales or your performance even more than your product. Um, so if you give enough exposure these colors become part of your brand. So you wanna encourage this association by using all these brand color colors consistently. So that means repeating, repeating, repeating everywhere possible. Um, like your logo, your storefront, your website, any in-store designs, um, social media ads, and even staff uniforms if you're at that part of your business. Mm -hmm. I actually have an agent out west and one of her main colors is teal. Um, so every winter, she gives her clients an actual teal shovel. Um, and it just makes her stand out. Everyone loves it. Like a, a teal shovel with a teal bow. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it's really like a brilliant idea. And she continues it everywhere, like golf balls. Um, yeah, just anything she gives out. It has her color and it just makes people remember Sarah, that's all it puts two and two together. Um, they wouldn't even need to see the tag. They just see no. the color and they'd say, oh, yeah. obviously Sarah dropped that off. And Exactly. And yeah. uh, that works well because, yeah, um, the 
but to be able to use this, you need to, it's repetition, right? You, if you use that same color everywhere, it's just going to strengthen um, your awareness, your brand awareness. Mm -hmm. um, so before you choose though, what colors you want to represent yourself and your business, your vision, you also have to decide your ideal brand personality. So choosing colors is easy, but you need to know first, like how you want to communicate yourself in your business. Um, and there's a few tools out there. So you want to think of your company as a person, um, who they are, what's important to them. Uh, like I said, there's on, on the internet, and I actually have quite a few on hand if ever, if anyone wants me to send their way, there are different charts, worksheets, and you look at yourself and you look, okay, how and where do I want my brand to stand within any of the options? And that helps you establish your brand personality. Even going through like, would you rather questions as simple as um, vacation picks, uh, home picks, like looking at a backyard, what, where would you, what, what inspires you more? Where's your passion? And all of those things can create that brand personality. Um, and then when you create your, discover your brand personality, you want to then go to your colors. Um, but you, so there's so many colors out there. There's so many shades. So really when it gets to this point, you just have to look at the facts of colors. And obviously there's a lot of text here. I can go through a little bit quickly. Um, and I think we know on a whole what these colors will evoke. Like red is passion, excitement, um, anger. Um, orange is more of a playfulness and vitality. Yellow is more youthful optimism. Um, green, which is used a lot in like eco-friendly products and companies because um, it evokes stability, prosperity, growth. Um, a lot of financial companies will use green as well because it signifies money and again, growth. Light blue, um, this ex 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 exudes, there we go, uh, tranquility and trust. And so you'll see a lot of spas use blue because again, it's just that, it's just that feel you get when you see that color, whether it's on a store sign, paint color on the wall, or even on their website, like their first impression to the website. If you had that calming feel, that's a place you're going to want to go. Um, dark blue, professionalism, security, formality. You'll see a lot of uh, lawyers, accountants use a dark blue. Um, purple is more maybe like a creative color. Um, there's, it's, it can signify luxury and royalty as well. Um, pink, femininity, youth, and in innocence, and it's a nice color because it can range. The shades of pink are crazy, and it can range from modern to luxurious to classic. Um, brown isn't used a lot, but again, um, it's a old-fashioned, it's sturdy, um, down to earth. So, depending on your type of business, that might be a good one as an accent color. Um, and then, if you go into white. It, very simple. That can be used great as your neutral color. Um, gray, this again is classic, serious, mis uh, mysterious, or mature. Um, this, it, I, you use this a lot as like your background colors because um, it is a soft color and then your, your accent and your base can pop out of there. Um, black is another super common color because people just think power, sexy, luxurious. Um, it's a good pop-out color to use. You helped me with my colors. And, yeah, and uh, it it's funny what a small tweak can do. Like my previous, I had, I still kept with the same color family, but you helped me with the shades and it's just transformed everything. Yeah, it's a simple, simple, yeah, a simple fix, a simple change, but it can, when you put it on something big, like an advertisement or a website, it can totally change the feel when someone enters that mm -hmm. area. Um, so a lot of people will choose three or four colors for like your color template for your color brand. I like to use only three. Um, I always add another one on the brand board just to, to give a little bit more variety, but I think you focus on three colors. And the first color you're gonna wanna choose is that base color. Um, so it should reflect not only like your brand's dominant trait, but also appeal to your target audience. Um, and once you choose this color, then you're going to choose your other colors based on the how well they will match with this color. 
um, your second color is going to be that accent color. And this is going to be a bit harder because even though you want to match it to your personality, you also want to pair it like visually with your customer base and you want it to match well with your base color. Um, and this is where you can really play with the shades. So if your base color is a, is a mauve and your accent color might be a teal, you have the range of a very light teal um, to a dark teal, depending on the feeling that you want to come across. And then the last one is your neutral color. And this is simply used more as a background color, as mentioned before, when you're choosing different colors. Um, the hues of gray is the most common. And also you have beiges and whites and off-whites will work really well. Some people will use black because like I said, it's a very powerful, um, luxurious color. You just have to be careful that that doesn't dominate over your main base color. Um, so just, and again, when playing with all the colors, um, choose three and then just add another one. I'll show you the next slide here is the brand board. So this is something that I create for all my clients and I absolutely love creating it. And a lot of people know about mood boards, vision boards. Um, it's just creating that board and that vision for your business. Um, it's all in one. It shows your values, your attributes, your personality all in one place. It's kind of like your reference sheet. Um, and within this, you're going to always want to include your logo. Um, I always recommend having an alternate logo or a tagline um, just in that right hand side, because especially on social media, your logo might not always work in different areas, even your profile pic on your uh, cover photo, or you might want something to always have like a watermark on any of your posts. So I always recommend taking your main logo and just tweaking it a little or asking your designer just to tweak it a little. Um, so you have a second option to go to. Um, on that, I know this isn't, well, it is branding, but on that base with logos, always make sure you get one on a clear black, clear background, one on a white background, and one in black and white. Because you don't know what you're going to be doing down the line, um, whether you're going to have to send it to, for a billboard or a magazine, you have no idea what they're going to put it against. So if you could provide them with all those logos, because um, I've seen so many where, yeah, they'll send their logo and then you, you're looking through the magazine as a supporting um, business and you can't even see their logo because they put it on a background that washes out. So um, yeah, it's the biggest thing is always have a two logos and then have ones on different backgrounds. So then going to your main color palette, like I said, you want to choose three to four. So you're going to have your accent, your base, and your neutral. The other thing you want to think of that you would put on your brand board are graphic elements. Um, and these are just more icons that you can use. Uh, they are great to be used on your website. So for headers, um, or introducing different uh, products or services. Um, they're also great things to put over your, any of your social media posts as a watermark. Um, and then you have your brand style, which is all the photos like that you want to, the feel of your business. Um, so just choose a few stock photos. So then when you come back to that, say, yes, that's my feeling. That's what I wanna be portrayed as. Um, the other two areas is the typography, which is, I always recommend doing two. One being your header, your title, um, and the other one just being your body. And try, be very careful when you choose the fonts because scroll can be great, um, but it won't always work on every, on all formats. So if you're going to choose a cursive um, font, choose one that's a simple cursive. Um, and then the next two things, which a lot of people don't think of, is the voice and tone of your business. So your voice is like how your content is actually going to sound in your client's head. You just want to, um, it's a big thing that like you don't think of how you want to be portrayed, but think of the voice that you want to hear in your client's head. The other thing is your tone, because this seeps into all of your um, business communication, regardless if it's social media or customer service. So like I said, a lot of people don't know about brand boards or they don't think they're important, um, but it's a great tool to use 
um, as a reference sheet, your go-to, especially if you're creating a new project. Sometimes when you're in a rut and you need some inspiration, coming back to your brand board will remind you where you started, where your vision is, and where you want to go. Yeah, I, I refer to mine every time I do a social media post. And um, if you guys stay till the end, uh, Jenny, I will talk a little bit more about something we've partnered on to help with that. Um, because yeah, as in particular, um, the design elements, um, but also the voice and tone, I feel like that has been a game changer for me, just knowing how I need to speak in my captions and what colors to present in the images I do. It just makes it so much easier. And I'm not constantly thinking, sometimes it, there's that pressure to be creative with every post you do, but marketing's not always about being creative all the time. It's actually about repeating that message. So when you have a good solid brand, you can easily repeat the message that you need to get out there in a, in a simple way, in many different ways, but just referring back to your brand board as kind of like your little, your roadmap, your guide to be able to do that. So yeah, yeah I, I love um, brand boards. <laughs> And it, because, yeah, people, like you said, people think you need to get creative and do something different, but to your clients, that looks like you're kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't show that professional look. It doesn't show, so yeah, repeating consistency is huge. Um, you can change yeah. it up a little with your photos and everything like that, but if, this, if you have the same tone, the same voice, colors, then they're just going to remember you. The, the thing about being all over the place too is if you are showing that in your marketing, that's actually the, a reflection of your brand as well. You're kind of saying to your potential clients, you might get this experience with me, you might get that experience with me. I'm not necessarily offering a consistent experience um, when you're kind of all over the map with things. So um, you're sending a message even if you don't intend to. That's why it's nice to kind of have a plan and decide how you're going to control that experience with people. Um, because yeah, it, it has a, it has an impact regardless of, of whether you've put it into a brand board or not. So, um, so I'm going to chat a bit about photos um, and I'm using the term a headshot, but um, I'm using that term very loosely. Um, headshots don't have to be, um, you know, kind of something you'd see in a financial setting, um, head and shoulders. Headshots can just be your face um, in any aspect, you doing something, you just showing up for your brand on your social media outlets, however you want to do it on your website. Um, and it's really important now more than ever to use headshots. And I was talking about this in an earlier post because we're all covered with masks all the time. Like this is probably um, the way we see faces the most now is through um, these sorts of meetings, social media and things like that. Um, because when I see my clients in person, I have a mask on, I have a big face shield on. So it's really wonderful for your clients to be able to kind of see you before they get to interact with you directly. And um, there's a big difference kind of between a good headshot and a great headshot. Um, a good headshot is important, but if you can get a headshot with connection um, where you're able to connect with your client, your clients are very, very much more likely to buy from you and just connect with you in general. Um, and if you're thinking like long game with your customers, showing up regularly and um, positioning yourself in a way that you are relatable and people feel they can kind of see themselves in you, um, you're going to come across as a lot more likable, which um, is a huge advantage for us right now as small business owners. Um, there's a lot of, um, and I think it's just because we've gone through years of really bad customer service. Like, have you guys ever been on the phone with like on hold for like a million hours with a big corporation? I won't name any names. You're just waiting and waiting to sort out a customer service issue. Like that <laughs> has been, it. yeah, it's been fuel for all of us to kind of not feel as great about our interactions with large companies. Even if you are working for a large company, but you're in a position where you're face to face with your clients, you have the power to change that um, and to be able to represent your brand so much better. And that's because people are just connecting way more with small business owners. So it's the time to leverage it. Um, take advantage now while that trust is kind of, you know, we're kind of shifting into trusting more small businesses more. 
Um, yeah, so um, that gives us the opportunity basically to um, know, like, and trust you more. Um, Let me know. I'm not being a good, like, Oh, you're doing Part fantastic. Partner of going to the right slides. So Jenny's in charge of the slides today because uh, <laughs> she, let me she's know the design extraordinaire. So yeah, we can flip to the next slide. Okay. Um, this is really a corny thing I'm saying, but um, Instagram doesn't actually love my face, but it loves faces. And um, I guaranteed if you get your face up in some posts on Instagram, you're going to see people connect with you way more than if you showed a picture of a product. Um, it's so important. And I'm not saying don't post pictures of products, services, other things, but anytime you can get faces in your picture, particularly yours, even though that makes all of us very uncomfortable, um, you are going to see people connect with you more. And um, Jenny, we were talking about this, about um, graphic designers and anybody behind the scenes people who operate cameras as well yeah, people exactly. there's like an elusiveness to us people don't feel connected with us initially and that like and um a lot of people told me this and my husband just told me this yesterday that when I got my headshots done a year ago that just it was a it was a game changer because even though I was out there doing what I, st I do now people didn't know me so as soon yeah. as I put my face out there and then connected that face with my brand, things started to change. And the exposure just went from low to like extremely high. And as you were saying, like Instagram, Facebook, seeing a photo will do so much better mm -hmm. than a product post. That's frustrating. It is really um, frustrating. Because <laughs> like, I can tell you, I will do a post um, about a service that I have. And the next day I'll do a video of my this breaking my math my prince harry mug um and that will do hundreds and hundreds more than my product but i'm getting those people in there i'm engaging with them so then they're going to be watching more so then they'll remember oh that's the crazy lady who loves prince harry broker mug she does social media if it comes up later on in the conversation, but it shows, I think it's like 82% of your posts um, will do better if it's a picture mm -hmm. or a video. Yeah. Which is even more cringe. I don't think that's the right word. More cringeworthy, but. Well, it's um, because we put a lot face. of preparation into what we do and we want, and it's, it's not saying that those things aren't important because it also gets more eyeballs on the other stuff too. Yes, exactly. But it does. Right. And then you're fresh in people's mind, but it just, it's so interesting to me that, um, well, if you go to the next slide, I'll show you an example of, um, a, I sat in with my husband and we did these product shots and I followed a rule that I like to follow with my product photography, which is getting hands and everything in the picture. Cause I feel connection with your product is important not just putting an object on a, on a backdrop and photographing it. Um, but of course, um, can you guess which one got the most engagement? Um, it, it's pretty obvious. It, it was the first image, um, which actually I, I kind of cheated here. My second image was below that. But I feel like um, that my face, this is just a quick shot that um, me and my husband took out while we were walking with the kids. I brought my camera along. And of course, that's the one that everybody wants to, to like and call, and I got way more comments on it. Meanwhile, I've got an image of all the beautiful things I have to offer, like, look at these albums. And I'm like, talking about these products. And I'm so excited. But then it's just, you know, me holding a camera and people are <laughs> more excited about that. <laughs> but, um, can I ask you guys quickly, do you, do any of you have post pictures of yourself or have done live feeds or videos? I, I just, see a comment I, here from Elke about putting my face out there makes me feel very anxious. I'd rather hide behind my product. I know. And yeah. Elke, you yeah. know me. I like that took me a long, I've been in it since 2005 and I really didn't come out from behind my product until last year. And again, it just drastically changed, changed my business. So I know it's I have, working and you never have to look at it again. That's a nice thing too. It gets no. put out there. And you don't have to look. And you know what? Um, this is interesting that if I heard this on a TED talk, if you make a mistake when you're talking or doing something, you'd think that that would make you like maybe I wouldn't think this, but 
you could assume it would make you like less reputable, less likable. People actually, your likability goes up. So if you do you're something, relatable. you're more relatable. People connect with you more. So um, it's it's definitely super scary, um, as me and Jenny can <laughs> confirm yes. before yes. this. We're like getting the jitters, but you feel such a rush afterwards when you know you've done something. And then I feel like those little bits kind of build your confidence and then you kind of just get more used to it and it becomes less of a thing and I and I was the same I didn't do headshots regularly and I try to make them so that I wasn't looking at the camera as much and or have the camera in my face but at the Slowly, end of the day you gradual yeah. into it to a full, people want to see your face so yeah um, and again like and that's pairing your brand your brand your story um it all it all goes together yeah people are way more receptive oh, to your sorry. story oh that's that okay was the most liked that was the one yeah yeah and here's some stats about that so you're going to have a 38 percent higher chance of getting likes um this is on instagram in particular but i i would assume it would be similar on facebook and um 32 percent more likely to get comments um comments and saves are like how you get ahead on instagram um yeah, so it, it's definitely worth doing. And I mean, every nine images, like so that you have your little grid, you need to get your face up there. So that time, if anybody new discovers you, they're going to have, you know, one opportunity to see your face and um, connect with you a little bit more that way and know that you're not just some nameless brand because stock photography is very handy, but it, it doesn't Sometimes you wonder when there's a lot of stock used, are you like, is this just a fly by night place? Like, is this even a real business? Because we've all seen, you know, uh, the, those sorts of si uh, situations where photography has been borrowed or stolen and, and used on a, on a company that's not even real. But you're putting your face out there, you're showing legitimacy and it builds trust. Like, you ever go to those trust um, websites to figure <laughs> out like, okay, I want to, I was buying dresses the other day for my client wardrobe and I was like, oh, those are pretty. I'm like, but is this a real website? Am I gonna, are they gonna send me the dresses? So I'm on to Trustpilot to check and see if it's legit. And uh, you can do that by showing your face. It's kind of like a built-in Trustpilot, if you will. When you were saying about when they go to your, um, your Instagram feed and they see those yes. nine images, and like you said, one of them should be your face. The other thing you want, and I tell clients all this all the time is that, you want to also, you want it to look like a photo album. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that shows if you're consistent and your branding is consistent, you will see your colors in those. You will see your icon, your niche, which we'll talk about just in a few. Um, but that's big too. Like when they go and see those nine, um, they want to see, okay, this person's consistent. They have a brand, they're professional and it's, they're a person. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, we kind of already talked about this, but um, if you sell products and you're thinking like, oh, I can, I can maybe hide behind my products instead of putting my face out there. You can, um, but you're going to get more sales if you show your face um, because Does people it... just, there's a story, there's already a story there. I'm the person that makes these things. Um, and it's such a great jumping off point for storytelling. Um, you know, we all have stories that we share um, and certain experiences that we share that um, you can connect with your customer over and getting yourself into those stories and having that face that people can go, oh yeah, she, she gets me. You know, she has a hard time in my case, getting my kids off to school in the morning without being late, blah, 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 or whatever the story may be. But, um, and you can talk about that. And it doesn't always have to be about the product you're selling. Um, it's more about a person buying into you as the representation of your brand. And then they're more warm to um, purchasing from you. And same thing, even if you're not a personal brand, you can still be the face of your business. If you're called, you know, in my case, like ABC Photography, I can still be the representation of that brand. Um, in fact, it's great because if you have people helping you in your business, you can have more people that can be the face of your brand as well. And um, again, we all feeling comfortable in front of the camera. It's, it's hard for all of us and especially those of us that are more used to being behind the scenes. But um, find someone that you connect with that can bring up, even if it's like 
a friend to start that's taking your photo that you feel you can be yourself with, start there, build some confidence. And um, if you decide to go pro, find someone you feel connected with that you can really um, get comfortable in front of and, and, and it doesn't make you feel too awkward. <laughs> that's huge. And like I said, like I felt so comfortable with you and that allowed me to take a deep breath and be like, no, I can do this when I was getting my headshots last year. So, um, Elke, when Rachel was just talking about that, like, I know like your business is your pro you're a product based business and selling beautiful, amazing wall hangings. And I was thinking, I saw Rachel's video this morning. Um, it was very quick, fast paced type video of you getting the outfits ready. Yes. And I'm just thinking, Elke, that's something you know, doing a quick video of you putting together someone's product um, or going out shopping to get the materials. Mm -hmm. um, so even though you're a product based, those are things that you can do to show that you're the face of the brand. So, and I'm sorry, I'm just choosing Elke. I just know the products and it's just and that's an example. a great suggestion. Like, and it's a simple case of setting your camera up on the floor, putting it in hyperlapse mode and just doing your thing, uploading it to your stories. And it just shows people what you're doing in a day and your face is there. You don't have to be like right there yeah. just yet you can kind of dip your toes in the water. And, you know, I found, I did a, um, a reel, um, where I was in the actual reel and I was blown away at how many people commented. Um, and it doesn't, you don't have to have like a million followers in order to, to have it make an impact because it's just about reaching, um, really on a local level, people that, it doesn't have to just be local because you can expand, but um, just finding a few people to buy your products and just kind of building from there. It, it, it's about who's going to, you can convert into a buyer, not necessarily being like a million likes and everything too. So. And just think once you get comfortable with like your image and then you do a video, what's next? It's TikTok, but that's it's a true. whole other level. I'm just <laughs> it is true, but I can't do that yet. <laughs> yes so again um it does feel weird to um put your face out there but you'll see results right away and um i think that's like a good action step if you can do it you need to get that goal too to mm -hmm. yeah now, um, the next step as well, um, it's not just about headshots. Um, getting product and brand images out there um, in a creative way is something that you can do on your own as well. And um, when you're showing your products, I was saying before, get your, um, get your faces in there, get yourself in there and find creative ways to show like a human element of people interacting with your product. Um, and you see some examples here. You might not even know what these clients do. Um, this uh, group I photographed, they're real estate agents. Um, so they got a picture of them celebrating um, that somebody bought, uh, that they sold one of their listings. Um, and this is a, a massage therapist, um, dog groomer, uh, which you might not know. She does Reiki for dogs, but there's all sorts of creative ways you can do things. And all of these, except for the clothing, have a human element to it. And my eye tends to go to the ones with people in them more than necessarily uh, just the clothing. Not that there's anything wrong with the clothing one too, but it just gives you a little bit more options. So, yeah. Okay, hey, and it looks like the last thing we're gonna talk about is finding your niche. So a lot of people, when they're talking about businesses and your competitors, um, people say, find your niche find what makes you stand out from everyone else. And they're talking more on what product or what service you can offer that's different than everyone else. But I don't look at it like that um, because there's so many businesses right now that are doing the same thing, have the same services. So find your niche in a different way. Find it in an image, a tagline, um, your motto or an icon. And that you use that consistently with your brand. For an example, and I had talked about this in the beginning, was pineapples. I have no idea why I added a pineapple. I love pineapples, um, but I added a little pineapple to the end of my logo. Um, and then since then, if you look at all my posts, there's a pineapple somewhere. Um, and I'm now known as a pineapple. I get, I honestly have had people drop off cups with pineapples on. I just had a friend's daughter, my 
my daughter's friend's mom drop off pineapple lights um, that she found at the dollar store. Um, and it's because that was my niche, even though it has nothing to do with social media. It was my niche, my brand, and then I'm known for that. And then once I'm known, um, they'll, then it's, what does she do? How can I, what products or services does she have? Um, for example, if it's not an icon or an image, I have a couple of real estate agents who one uses a heart and it's her heart of her home, but a heart is on everything. When anyone sees the red heart, they know, okay, that's Jackie. Um, I have another one who has a hashtag. The hashtag is used on every post, um, whether it's on the image, overlaid on the image, which is my recommendation, also in your description or your comments. Um, but just a simple tagline, a simple word would be something that you need to use as your niche. It doesn't have to be what you offer. It's something that's within your brand that's different, that makes you stand out, makes you original, and then use that consistently. You might not see um, the change for a little while, um, but after you use the repetition consistently throughout all of your social media, your website, your marketing. Like I said, if you, anything I hand out, to, I'm gonna totally, I don't even know what's called, um, self-promote. Like I have a mug, yeah. right? Like you put it everywhere and then it just gets to be um, what people remember you for. And then entails, remembers and knows your product and service. Um, so the next step is a part of finding your niche is your glass of champagne. And I don't know if anyone has ever heard of this, um, but I listened to a webinar, I think her name was Hillary Rushford, and she introduced this glass, glass of champagne. And I absolutely love it. I had no idea what it was, but really it's another way to stand out from everyone else. This is your free giveaway. It's your freebie. Um, and it can be anything from a coupon, a ebook, a recipe, even a free consultation or a webinar. Um, it's something that you're giving your clients that's unique. Um, it engages. And two places you're going to really want to use this glass of champagne is in your email marketing plan. Um, and another big one is to use it in your bio of your Instagram. Um, if you put in like, yeah, free something or sign up and get this. I know it seems so cliche, but it is your glass of champagne, your sharing with someone, celebrating with someone and giving back to someone. Yeah. It's a great way for them to get a feel of what it might be like to work with you too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's hard to think of them. It took me ages to think of mine. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, really fun to, to be able to offer something that feels good too. You're starting off that client interaction with like a positive gesture on your, on your part. It's something so simple. And a lot of real estate agents, right? Theirs is um, free home consultation or, I mean, free market evaluation. Evaluation, right? yeah. But if they do it in a way to make it unique, um, how to get that glass of champagne, then they're going to be memorable compared to all the other real estate agents. Yeah, it's an opportunity to set yourself apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we are partnering on uh, two packages and... Uh, we will be offering um, something called our Little Black Dress Package. Uh, and it includes uh, some headshots with me, some marketing help with Jenny and branding. And um, it's super exciting. We have a second package as well for someone that's just like, get this off my plate, I need help. Uh, <laughs> so um, we have a few options and we're going to share some more information on that. Um, uh, if you guys uh, would like to, um, and um, it will basically just kind of get you started so that you can feel more confident with branding and have a nice little roadmap so you can start getting this material out there and let people know about what you do. And it's even if you already have a logo um, or maybe some colors in mind, these packages will still work for you because whether we refresh your logo or like I said, we create that secondary logo for you, refresh your colors and then the headshots are huge. Um, that just puts you out there and yeah, two great packages um, at different levels. Yeah, and with the headshots as well, um, I'll be providing um, some tips and training on 
how to create your own images as well um, so that you're not just having to repost the same few shots. Um, I have a few really good tips on how to create a little photo space in your home um, or, or your business, wherever you are, so that you can get kind of that same consistent, nice lighting and um, that consistency that you need in order to um, make your brand more cohesive as well. And on my part in the packages, on top of a logo and brand board, um, I'll also give resources and tips for social media. It'll be, um, example, content calendars, sample posts, sample content, um, just tips on when to post, um, what items to post, hashtags to post. So another added bonus. It's super exciting. You guys, we all set up. <laughs> and I'm really, like, I love the little black dress because it's your go-to, simple mm -hmm. um, go-to. Yep. So we'll post a link for that in the chat. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, in our page, we'll post a link um, yeah. for both packages, well, images and sign. Um, in the meantime, just contact either of us for more information. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, to thank you for coming, um, I have a little something to offer, and that is my favorite local hashtags. Um, I find, for me, what's really helped me to get a better following in the Woodstock, London area is using hashtags on Instagram that are uh, common. Oh, good. Oh, he's excited um, <laughs> to, learn about, uh, to learn about me on a local level. Um, and it's great because you can form partnerships. And um, it's just because we follow certain local hashtags. Um, but I have a few that you might not have heard of. Um, I have them kind of centered, you know, from Canada to Ontario to as local as Woodstock, Norfolk, um, London. So um, I'll include that for you. And Jenny, you have something to offer as well. I'm going to, as part of the branding, um, I'm going to offer worksheets that will help with your uh, color values and your voice and tone. It's kind of a voice and tone bank and um, helping you choose your colors and the meanings of colors. So yeah, we have some great goodies. So what we're going to do is when we're done today, we're going to post um, a link on our page where you can enter your email address and you will automatically receive um, your glass of champagne. Actually, two glasses of champagne. We should have cheers today. <laughs> Why didn't I bring my champagne? I know. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you guys for coming. I, I feel like too, if you guys have any success stories you want to share, we'd love to hear about it on the Facebook page. So if you are, if you use some of the free items that we've sent over and they've helped you move the needle a little bit, please share because this stuff kind of helps motivate us and it helps keep us going when we have some success stories or even some struggles that you need a little bit of extra help with. Um, that's what we're here for. So and anything that you might have, like that we brought up today that you wanted more information on, or if any of these tips have helped, or maybe if you've posted a video or photo, let us know. Yeah. Well, we'll come over and comment on it. Exactly. More exposure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions to end anything off um, that, that you might have been saving? <laughs> I know it's on the spot. So I might have missed it. Where will we receive information about the little black dress um, offer? So we're going to put package, or both of our packages up on our Facebook page. Okay, perfect. It'll be on our webinar page, but also on our both business pages. We'll offer okay. it. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they're both excellent for, depending on what point you are in your business, um, one of them kind of takes a lot of the stress off of you. We just kind of take it, take the ideas and, and figure out together what we'll do. Um, the other one allows you to kind of DIY some of it. So um, it's really just kind of whatever fits where you're at right now. So, yeah. Great. I think that's it, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank like said, you guys. If you guys have any questions afterwards, feel free to message either of us and hopefully we can help and hopefully you got some tips and resources from today that can help take you to the next next level oh great so thanks Audrey. okay thanks Val. okay thanks guys thanks, Sarah. Okay. bye talk to you soon